Hey everybody, it's Pastor Haley from Amazing Grace Baptist Church, Wichita, Kansas. Uh, this is my seventh time making this video uh, because I don't like listening to myself talk, so I've redone it because I don't like listening the way I talk, uh, or because I get a phone call and it interrupts the video, and so I got to start over. And so let's pray, Amen, that I can get through now the seventh time uh, without interruption. Uh, but I just want to encourage our church, for those that come faithfully, uh, for what we're going to be doing going forward with the coronavirus situation and just kind of the steps that we're going to be taking and things going forward for that, uh, be an encouragement to you. Uh, first of all, I want to just read to you from a portion of scripture I think will be a blessing and be an encouragement to us and also help us understand what we're going to be doing going forward. Psalms chapter 33, verse number 16, there is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength, and horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. So just a reminder for our church and for Christians that, you know, in this time of crisis, you know, the Lord is two things. The Bible says the Lord is our help. Uh, if you need any help in any in any way, you know, the we have a lot of unknowns going forward. Uh, people not, uh, people losing their job, not working. Uh, people with their health and, and, and am I going to get sick? Will I get the virus? You know, I don't, I don't know some of those questions or some of those answers to those questions. Uh, but I do know that the Lord is your help. Uh, where man cannot help you. The government's trying to help as much as they can, but it's a reminder that the government is not our help. Uh, they can try to do whatever that they want to do, but our help is the Lord. And so we, we can't ever forget that you know, in this time of a crisis that the government is not the answer. Amen. And to all Americans, can I encourage you, the government's not the answer. Amen. But the Lord is our help. And second of all, the Lord is our shield. Uh, he is the one that protects us. Uh, the Bible says here that the king is not uh, that there's no the king is not saved by the multitude of an host. So a, a big army is not going to save the king. Uh, the mighty man is not delivered because of his strength, and the horse is a vain thing for battle. So the government is trying to put all these precautions to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. And I think nothing wrong with some of those things, but it's a reminder that uh, just like the the army for the king is not the answer. The strength for the mighty man and the horse is not the answer. Are those things wrong? No. I think a king ought to have a big army. I see nothing wrong with that. I see nothing wrong with having a horse. I see nothing wrong with having much strength. But our faith is not in those things that we have. Our, our faith is in the Lord. And so we can take those precautions. A king that has a big army is not a wrong precaution, but his faith cannot be entirely in that. His faith has to understand uh, has to be in the Lord, and he has to understand that it's God the one that brings safety, not these things that we have in this life. And so our country is trying to put all these restrictions and all these precautions, but we're forgetting God. And we have to remember that those precautions are not wrong, but you can take all the precautions that you want to, and if God wants you to have the disease, God will get it to you. And I'm not saying that God wants to give people the disease but uh, and this coronavirus and all of that. But we have to remember that the, that the government's not the answer. And all the things that we have in this life, all the precautions that we take are not the answer. Our help and our safety is of the Lord. And so we rejoice. The Bible says here, notice this verse. We, our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Amen. So we rejoice because we trust the Lord and, and we know that God will see us through. God will help us. God will be our shield. Even if I get the coronavirus, I'm not exempt from that. Even if I get it, I understand that God is my help and God will take care of me. And that if I get it, God will help me through it. If I die, God forbid. Uh, but if I die, then God will help my family through it. Amen. Praise the Lord for heaven. Uh, and I don't wish for those things. Uh, but if we're fearful and afraid, there's nothing wrong with that. But we let our heart rejoice because we trust the Lord. God will take care of us. And let's not forget God in these times. Just because we take all these precautions that the world is taking does not guarantee our safety. What guarantees our safety, what guarantees our protection is the Lord 
uh, behind the things that we have. Amen. So just encouragement to you, you know, so a couple things going forward for our church. First of all, there was a ban uh, in Sedgwick County uh, and, and, of course, in all of Kansas for 50 people or more gathered in one place. But I uh, went through and I studied that, read the letter from Governor Kelly. You can read her letter. It's online, uh, the letter that she puts out uh, there, the official statement. And it says on there that religious gatherings are exempt from that ban. So uh, our church is exempt from a 50-person ban in one place. So we can have church if we have 65, 75 people, uh, and that's okay. Now, they encourage you know, still good wellness practices, which we do, and we're going to continue doing that. But we can continue to have service without interruption. We don't have to abide by the ban of 50 people. But in doing that, I still encourage our church, let's be careful going forward, You know, still practice good wellness, wa wash your hands, uh, sanitize your hands, bring hand sanitizer. We have hand sanitizer at the church. Continue to use those things. Uh, make sure that we're, you know, uh, we're not shaking hands. We're going to prevent handshaking and things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to fist bump. I'm not going to even do any of those things. I just want to, you know, prevent the spread of that. God forbid if anybody has it. Because the problem is with the coronavirus, you can have that and not show any symptoms and, and be spreading that and not realizing it. And so just being careful with those things, practicing good wellness that we can make sure that we, you know, not spread it around to other people. So we're not going to have those uh, normal things that we do, handshaking time and all of that. And then when you come, you know, just encourage you, you know, to keep to your you and your family. Uh, let's, uh, you know, not be, you know, uh, high-fiving each other. And, and I love to high-five with the kids and have a good time uh, with our with our teenagers. And we're going to prevent some of those things going forward. You know, be careful with, uh, you know, our nursery, you know, and things like that. We're going to probably, you know, postpone, you know, maybe even our nursery coming for, going forward uh, as it gets wider spread in Sedgwick County and things like that. So we're just getting, you know, just practicing good wellness to prevent the spread because, again, it's not wrong to have precautions. Amen. And God encourages precautions. God encouraged the children of Israel, you know, with leprosy to have lots of precautions. And it's not the precaution that's wrong. It's when your faith is in the precaution, not in the Lord. So continue to trust the Lord, but take logical steps, uh, you know, that we, that we have because we're not exempt from getting diseases. So uh, we're going to continue to have services Wednesday night, uh, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night that are available. Please, you know, if you can come, uh, please come. If you, if you, for whatever reason, are uncomfortable coming, don't come. I understand completely as a pastor, if you're worried about it, you have young children or you, you know, you, you're worried about taking it home to somebody, don't come. I understand completely. And I don't, and I'm not going to criticize anybody. And I don't think anybody should be criticized for being cautious uh, in that area. Amen. Now, if you do come uh, and, and, you, and you're able to be here, then praise the Lord. And if you decide not to, because you're a little bit worried about it, there's nothing wrong with that, and I understand that completely. I'm going to be here, and we're going to try to live stream the services and get those things live streamed. If we can't get it live streamed, we'll get it uploaded as quickly as possible. Our upload does not take very long anymore because of a better internet connection. Uh, but we're going to try to get our live stream back up. The encoder went down, and so we can't do the live stream like we used to. But we're going to try to get those things back up and running so that way those of you at home can watch and tune into the church uh, here. But if you're uncomfortable, I understand. Please don't come. I understand completely. It's not a big deal. Uh, if you're older and you're in that higher risk bracket for getting the virus, it's very deadly. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it is very deadly for those that are older. Uh, they've talked about the flu death rate was one in a hundred. The coronavirus right now with what we know is one in 20. Uh, so it's a lot uh, higher, a lot more aggressive of a virus. So please take precautions. I'm not against those things. You know, trust the Lord and, uh, and, but be safe as well. Amen. And so, you know, make sure that if you're older, I encourage you to stay home. I understand if you do come, praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to try to prevent uh, spreading it around. Uh, for those, you know, if, uh, for those especially that we're trying to be cautious of, you know, and so we're going to do these things going forward. We're going to be available, be faithful. But again, if you're older, you're in a higher risk bracket, or if you're just uncomfortable, I understand not coming, you know, uh, rather be safe than sorry. Uh, and as it continues to spread, we're going to probably, you know, cancel more activities. God forbid if it spreads more, I'm praying that it doesn't. Uh, but just kind of keep a, keep in tune, keep updated. I'll try to keep putting uh, different videos to update for those of you at your homes and make sure that we're taking care of these things. Amen. But I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for all of this situation. Again, remember to continue just to trust the Lord. God will help you through whatever that you're going through right now as a result of this. God is the one that will take care of you, and God's the one that will protect you. Amen. And so let's continue to trust the Lord. Be faithful and put a smile on. Amen. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength, and it will be okay. Amen. And God will take care of us. And remember that God is the one that's got it under control. 
and we can enjoy life. Amen. We can. We don't have to live worried. We don't got to live in fear. Uh, we can, you know, be a little bit worried, and I don't want anybody to get it. But I can still enjoy life and have a good time, and enjoy serving the Lord, and enjoy, uh, you know, what God's given to me. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says. And so let's still enjoy the life that God's given to us and spread the gospel. Amen. If somebody around you not sure about heaven, let them know how they can know. And so we love you, praying for you. If you need anything, you can call me or my wife. Let us know, and we'll be here for you. God bless.